All right. Hey, you guys. It's Shanda and Krista. Good morning. <laughs> that was that reminds me of my mom. It's like, good morning. She does this screech when she wakes up in the morning. All right. Aww. So, um, so as people are joining, I see some people. Good morning, Amy. How are you? As people are starting to join, it's interesting with this technology. It's like you start to see them, but I'm not seeing the number yet. Okay, hi. Nicole. Hi, hi, Holly. Look at <laughs> I'm drinking my macchiato. In fact, actually, oh, I wish I had a, a bag of it. It's over there in my kitchen. Over there. Um, I have got, they actually sent me a big box of macchiato. Um, and I think that I should give some away to some people. So anybody who loves coffee and wants to try something new, like the macchiato that I drink, which is basically a maco, a, a maca latte where I put macadamia nut milk in it or a flavored almond milk. And I'm just in love with it. it. Gives you great energy. feels good. Sometimes coffee gets me a little jittery. So it's a great opportunity. So depending on, whoever either shares this Facebook Live a lot because I want to get Krista or or O'Leary. She always laughs at me, (laughs) butchering her name. I want to get Krista O'Leary's information out there into the world. And I'll tell you why this is important. Um, She is an interior designer. And you might say, well, what does that have anything to do with business and money and relationships and love and happiness? Well, it has a lot to do with it because your space influences the way that you feel and the way that you produce. We're going to get into that. She's got some wild stories about people who have manifested love and are still married 15 years later just by changing their home. She has people who literally have exploded in client bases, meaning that their their clients and their customers start rolling through the door inside of seven days by just changing their room or their house. And so we're also going to talk about something called room in a box, which is something that she's doing, which I think is really cool. So if you share this Facebook live with as many people as you can send a couple tags to some friends, then somebody will get a nice big box of maca latte today. Nadia will just tap you on the shoulder. She'll send you a private message to look for Nadia and she will let you know that you're the winner for being a generous person and helping me share Krista with the world. So I believe business is done best when we are generous with each other, when we stop talking shit behind each other's back and we actually start collaborating and working as a team and there's pieces that I do really well and there's pieces that Krista does really well in fact she has been informing me on my own house like for instance and Krista I'll get I'll give you an opportunity to jump in here but I'm just so excited that you're here um Krista I did a video of my house and I'm in transition right now. I'm building a house in Cardiff and I am living in like a beach bungalow right now. And it's great. The ocean's right there. It's absolutely beautiful. But, you know, there's Kate in here, our nanny. There's Ash in here, my husband. There's my two-year-old toddler. There's hopefully another one coming on the way. <laughs> and it's a lot. It's a lot of people in one place. So I said to Chris, I said, you know, our bikes, like we're triathletes. I was like, our bikes are like on the floor in our bedroom, you know, scratching the wall. And, you know, there's, you know, there's just stuff. There's just stuff everywhere. And she did some really interesting tweets. Like she had me take like a wall map of like the world and put it on a wall, which we've just ordered and then hang our bikes in front of it off the floor. So it looks like a piece of artwork. She also had me take a Buddha out of my bedroom, which never, and it'd be interesting for you to share why you took the Buddha out of my bedroom, Krista. Um, But she took the Buddha out of my bedroom and she's actually contracting a piece of art for us right now, which is this incredible like bird's eye view of this yacht and it's because I have an authentic vision of my family going on a yacht like a 120 140 foot yacht once a year as a tradition and we rent the yacht and we spend a week on that yacht with our family and friends and so this picture completely encapsulates the feeling that I have around wanting that to be a part of our life and having that additional baby or babies in our life so Krista welcome Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is so fun. And I have, I have my, this is actually my home in harmony shake. Nice, nice. (laughs) Yes. And, uh, and the recipe is in the back of my home in harmony book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And you know what, to be, um, to go along with your generosity, um, whoever you choose for the Macchino, I'll send one of these books and I'll sign it. Awesome. I love that. And your book, I told you, um, when I was reading your book, I said, you're one of the best writers I've actually ever encountered. Remember I told you that? I was like, I was like feeling like I was with you in that book and going through the different things that you've gone through in life. So it's an incredible book. It really is a good soul book. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Christy, share a little bit about Home and Harmony. You are an author of Hay House. Um, share a little bit about that book and what it is, and then let's get into some tactics that people can can start using to transform their home. Awesome, awesome. So to give you just a little background on me, um, I'm an interior designer. I have a graduate de degree in psychology. I've studied everything possible related to home, and I combined all of that and realized I had the special gift where I could go into people's environments and tweak them, make them you know, aesthetically beautiful, but more than that. It was about helping them create not only the, the environment that they were hoping to create, but to help them create the life that they were trying to create. Hmm. It, well, like for instance, so I get to hear your stories a lot, right? So because I, I get to be with you and talk to you and I'm privileged enough to be able to call you, which is great. Um, but tell me, so for instance, like I saw like Nicole Moore on here, who's an incredible love coach. We love her. She has a company called Love Works. Um, and so like someone like Nicole would love to know, you know, since she's a stand in the world for women to really find their soulmates and the man of their dreams and stop settling for less in relationships. Like I know you've got some history of working with clients that, you know, have been able to manifest love. So we share a little bit about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So actually one of my very favorite clients, I've um, been helping him for um, almost, I think it's almost 20 years at this point, a good 15 anyway, but he originally brought me into his house because he was a super successful attorney, like unbelievable businessman. And he was actually considered in Connecticut one of the most eligible bachelors. Like they did like the top 10 and he was within that top 10 and, you know, super powerful guy. But in his life, it was the women. It was just like a revolving door. Like he was eligible bachelor. Right. And so when I first went to his house, it, that his house screamed eligible bachelor. Like it literally looked like Miami Vice. Like do you remember <laughs> Miami Vice? Like the bright colors, like the party scenes. That was his house. And it was so interesting to me because again, he was so super successful in one area of his life. Yeah. And then this other area wasn't working the way he wanted it to work. And when I went into his home office, he had um, a regular office as well, but in his home, he had an office. His his office was like pristine. It was like clear. It felt good. It was powerful. And it exuded that side of him. Like you really could see that he was the power broker that he was. Yeah. But in this other area, it was like party guy. It was like single guy. And so, you know, we talked through what his vision was. And we created this just beautifully masculine environment that, you know, ex exuded this luxury lifestyle that it, that was really more him. You know, he, he he was no longer that like party Miami Vice guy. He and and the amazing thing was that he ended up only like I mean, less than um a month, I think he bumped into one of his childhood friends and they've, they've since been together. And as I said, he's been my client for 15 or so years. So, um, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're so sweet together for like 15 years. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, found his, he found his love like that. It was just amazing. Um, so like, I, and this is actually an interesting question that I, that just, popped in my head. I, I've heard. So one of the things I think a lot of people do is they understand like, you know, manifestation and they put like things around them, right. To be able to, which is a bit of what you do as well. Yeah. But, um, but like, I remember hearing something like when I was searching for the love of my life, that not to have pictures of like single people or single flowers around me. Is that true? 
It is. Well, so what happens in our environment is like if you think of your environment as always talking to you, okay. it's literally always talking to you. So initially you might put up um Let's say you were gifted something. Um, maybe someone passed away in your family and you were gifted this heirloom. Yep. And the heirloom is like super, super expensive. So you put it up on the shelf. But the problem is that you don't you don't have fond memories of the person that is associated with that heirloom. So every time you walk by that heirloom, initially you're aware of it and you're initially thinking like, oh, those, you know, that person wasn't nice to me. They made me feel badly about myself. Things weren't so great. And then what happens is every time you pass it, it sort of just fades into the background of that shelf and you don't even notice it anymore. Mm -hmm. But your unconscious mind is still connected to it. And that piece is still speaking to your subconscious. So it's sending messages to you all of the time. So it's really important to begin to look around your space and say, you know, what are these things telling me? Because if they're reminders of how great you are, or if they're reminders of how, you know, you're not worthy, then that is going to have a massive impact on how you show up in the world. Hmm, that's interesting. So that's kind of like the reason why you did a clutter detox for people, yeah. right? Was to, to clean some of that up inside of somebody's space. Yeah, you freaked me out when you said to me, you were telling me you were working with one of our clients and you said that she had a closet that when you opened up the closet, it was so, it was messy inside the closet and how that like was speaking to her prosperity and how you guys had to go in, you put a picture inside the closet, like interesting things that I'm going, yep, got one right there. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Can I tell you another fun story that this just actually happened to me the other day? And and I'm always like, I love what I do. And I'm always, but I come at everything in my life as I'm always learning, always excited to learn. And, and I like to have a childlike look at things that are happening. Um, yeah. And so again, we did the whole clutter clearing challenge. I did it along with, you know, all the people that that joined on. We had about a thousand people. Um, and and then after that, so I was completely, I mean, I'm pretty clear of clutter anyway, but then I was really clear of clutter. But then somebody asked me if I would mind donating a large suitcase. Um, to some charity, they're going to Haiti and they wanted to fill the suitcase with all sorts of stuff. And I said, absolutely. And can I fill the suitcase and give it to you? So I went into my shoe closet and I pulled off a bunch of shoes that, you know, I don't really use that often. And again, um, if you're thinking of, of clutter in, in your environment and you're thinking about the fact that you're, you're getting rid of things, of the, just the act of getting rid of some of that stuff then allows new energy to come in. So this is so great. So my we've just moved back into our it house. I need to go clean my, my shoes out. <laughs> so we just moved back into our house after two years, and we never anticipated that we were going to be out of this house for that long. We thought six months, right? So we're now, we're still going through boxes, unpacking, unpacking. So my husband comes up the other day and I'm thinking like, like I have this really great shoe closet and I'm really excited about it. And it really makes me excited that the thought of like going out and like finding cute shoes just to put on the shelf. <laughs> so he comes up with this massive box, like probably a box bigger than me. And he's like, hey, hon, do you want to take a look in here and see if you want any of this stuff? So I open it up. It's all shoes. Oh, gosh. And again... Like we've been gone from this house for two years. So those shoes were so, and they actually are like my, some of my very favorite shoes that were like summer fun sandals, like oh, adorable. So again, I share that with you because just know that when you begin to clear stuff out, the old energy, it allows the new energy to come in. And that, that was just a fun way to, to show that. It is. So here's what I think is interesting that a lot of people don't realize. So you sat, when you had to get out of your house to remodel it, right? You had some situations <laughs> with your house, so you did a remodel. Let's put it that way. Um, you moved into a house that you were less than inspired about. In fact, I remember you saying that you walked around the house, you didn't hang up any of the pictures. Were you there for two years in the rental house? 
Um, we were, yeah. Okay, so you didn't hang up the pictures. You didn't make the environment amazing. The pictures were leaning on the walls, and um, which is big for you, but you didn't want to put the pictures up because you said you didn't want to put nails in the wall to actually claim the space, right? Right. And so um, – I was just going to ask you. So, oh, so you made a declaration that you wanted a year of travel, right? <laughs> and this is for everybody watching right now that you want something inside your life. Just listen to this level of manifestation. So you make this declaration, and what did you do? And how? And how many? How many trips have you gone on recently? So I did. I made that declaration, and just to back it up a little bit, like the space was still beautiful, like. You know, because I have clients sometimes come to my house, they want to see what I actually can do. So it always it's always looks like a show house. But that being said, I I leaned pictures instead of putting those pictures up. And and I said, all right, this it has to be the year of travel because I I. I can't be here. It just is not inspiring. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> and so in the past year, we've taken t more than 20 trips, more than 20 trips to places like um, I've gone to London twice, Barcelona, Munich, Prague, um, countless trips down to either Miami, Key Biscayne, um, hockey tournaments out in Michigan, but <laughs> and just a, a lot of really fun places and and it was it was all because of that 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 intention that I had for myself and then setting up my environment in a very specific way to ensure that that actually came about and and the willingness to allow that to actually come about in my life so for example you know just a simple little tip is you know, I, I went out and I got this really cute little suitcase um, that it's it's a carry on and it allows you to hang like, I think like 10 or 15 dresses in it. So literally I can put the dresses in one part and then my shoes in another and I'm good to go. And yeah. so I had that and I had that at the ready in my closet. And then I had my line of travel dresses hanging right over it. And so anytime I got a call, I was I was ready. I was ready and able. <laughs> you just reminded me of something. The power of preparing for success. You know, every great success book talks about the power of preparation. Mm -hmm. And you're actually like you're taking that power of preparation into like you even put your dresses front and center and put the suitcase right there. So you're just you're ready to go. It's like not a big deal. There's no resistance or energy block or anything like that about Okay, I got a pack. Like, there's none of that in the space, so it makes it makes the yes so much easier to move forward in, right? Yeah, and it's one of those things. Like every time I would walk into my closet, it would make me smile, and I would say, "Oh, like I wonder what the next fun adventure will be." And you know, I mean, some really incredible things happen. You know, again, in my office in a space, um, you can see there's this book here, and it says luxury hotels because. Yeah. I actually won't stay. I'm a little bit of a hotel snob. I won't stay yeah. in, in like like a regular hotel. Um, so again, that was part of the vision in that. And I literally, I mean, you know, there were many Ritz Carltons that we stayed in, but I even had an invitation to stay at Windsor Castle on the grounds of Windsor Castle. So you know, that's another one. You've got to talk about that one too. <laughs> Sorry, it's great because I think people don't get it, right? We're like, oh, my house like makes me feel like claustrophobic or there's clutter in that closet or, you know, I, like I'm working in this environment and I just, I'm not productive. And it's like, like you said, your environment's speaking to you all the time. But like, for instance, you had a vision of, talk about the castle and what you did. <laughs> So I was in London. My husband was actually working in London and I, my, my youngest who's 13 and I decided to go over with him on, on the work trip. This was last April. And so she and I were touring, he's working all day. And at one point we're standing outside Buckingham palace and we're taking pictures. We're looking at this beautiful scene. And I thought to myself, I really want to have tea with the queen 
in her castle. And not only do I want to have tea with the queen in her castle, I really want to decorate a room in the castle. So a little later on in the day, we're at Harrods department store, which is like the fancy fun department store in London. So we're at Harrods and my daughter's looking around. <laughs> my daughter's looking around for souvenirs for her buddies to take home. And so we're in that area. And I come upon this mug and oh, I should have had it on coffee with Shanda today. Yes. <laughs> um, but I come across this mug and it was a commemorative mug for the queen. And mind you, again, I don't do anything ticky tacky. I don't, you know, our mugs are all the same mugs. And But I'm looking at this mug and I'm like, this is so fun. I actually love the colors. I love the fact it's etched in gold. Like this is adorable. I'm going to take this home with me and I'm going to visualize having tea with the queen. And so we came back to uh, Massachusetts and uh, every morning I would have my tea in my coffee mug and I would look at it and I would laugh at myself. I was like, this is hysterical. This is really funny. Well, that was April and I think it was probably May, end of May, I ended up getting an invitation to come stay at Windsor Castle. That's amazing. That's that, amazing. It is. It's, ama it's but amazing. It's possible for everybody. It's not just me. Like, that's what I want to no, share. I get it. I was actually going to ask you, though, like something that you triggered for me, like uh, when you were talking, I was like, I used to have a picture of Sarah Blakely on my phone. I, I didn't know who she was. I read her read, I think it was Forbes magazine. She was on the cover of Forbes magazine. And at that time in my life, you know, my company had just, I think I was just crossing the seven figure mark. And I was like, maybe even just before that. And I remember just thinking, oh my God, like there's this woman on Forbes. Like, I don't know why I was attracted to her, but I just was. And I opened up and I read the article and she loved Wayne Dyer. And I love Wayne Dyer. And so now I had this instant connection with her and nothing. And then, so now everything else that was written in the article was empowering to me. Like she was a billionaire. She owned hundred percent of her company, you know? And I was like, and she loved Wayne Dyer and she's totally spiritual. And she said, she, she visualized, she even did this with her four children. She visualized a car full of car seats. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and she goes, I've done this in every area of my life. All I do is I just see it. She goes, I don't put any intensity around having to meditate or visualize. You know, she's like, I just do it all day long when I see the thing, right? Like the, the trigger, right? And so I remember putting her on my phone and lo and behold, and I even went, I went to a psychic, which no offense if anybody's a psychic on here, but I just won't go to a psychic anymore because I think it's really important to, um, I think it's really important to trust God and to create with God versus have somebody else tell you what it is that you're creating. And so I went to a psychic and I said, I wonder if there's, I must have felt it coming in or something. I was like, I wonder if there's any opportunity that I'll get an opportunity to actually work with or be with or hang out with Sarah Blakely. She really inspires me. And, um, and she said, no, there's no way. And I just ignored that. But I took the picture off my phone probably about a year ago. And so it's not on my phone anymore. And um, lo and behold, I ended up meeting Sarah Blakely's husband, who we have a mutual friend, which is Joe DeSena, who owns Spartan Races. And um, I ended up going out to Spanx in Atlanta in January and working with her and her team. And it was just amazing. And she's just an amazing human being. Um, and now her husband actually trains some of our clients how to get mentally really unstoppable, right? And so I share all of that whole manifestation and the, the reason why that even got triggered is vision boards. You said something to me the other day and I actually took my vision board down, right? And so is there a power because, you know, I put Sarah on my phone, took it, I looked at it every day and then I took it off my phone and then look what happens. I have a vision board, I put it up, and then, you know, I take it down. I haven't gotten pregnant yet, but let's just knock on wood that that's going to happen. Who knows? I could be pregnant now. <laughs> okay, so so the, I love the fact that you had that vision on your phone. So you were, like, focused on it for, for a long time. Yeah. And then when you took it off, it was as if the pressure came off. 
And mm -hmm. then it, that allowed that possibility to, to flow in. So when I work with my clients, like I want to find things that are, are like at their core, mm -hmm. they like get goosebumps. You know, like when, when you were just talking about the, um, that print that I found for you from the London gallery, yep. the, um, like when you were talking about it, I felt goosebumps and yeah. my, and, and my sense is that you probably like, you right. And you and it's like, you have like just this really fun attachment to that. Right. So there's like no pressure there. There's no any of that. It's just like fun. Like fun. you want to squeeze it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was like I wanted to squeeze that that mug because it was fun every day. It wasn't anything. It just was fun. So I think that's what happens. Like with the vision boards, people put that up. There's so much pressure. Like when is it going to happen? How is it going to show up? What's what is the and and you just you can't do it that way. And it it really is about again that's like that impacts your subconscious so you start to walk by that vision board and even if you're thinking you're thinking positive thoughts about it on a unconscious level that's really impacting your subconscious in a really negative way and it's like a weight and so that's always my goal and when I work with clients is to really kind of get into their, like their mental state. So I really truly understand. And you know, that's where my, my graduate degree in psychology came yeah. up. Like, I always yeah. wondered like, why did I go down that path? And now I'm down this path and now it all makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. Well, that reminds me of like when someone, let's get into business for a second, because obviously a lot of people follow me and they want to make money. They're, right. That's a big deal for them. And I have people like, you know, Tracy Campoli, who's a client of mine, who, you know, for the first year didn't follow much coaching and she got mediocre results, right? And not that she didn't work, but she just, you know, she didn't really embrace herself in the coaching. And then the next year she's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to follow Shanda's coaching and I have a no stress policy where I'm going to have fun while I do it, right? Because she has an intensity to her personality, but she's like, like it's rare that you ever see that in Tracy because she's this light, blonde, you know, beautiful woman who, you know, is able to hold her energy in a level that she, when she makes the commitment, she does it. So then she just started closing like crazy, right? So what would you say to someone who, is in let's say a sales cycle they're trying to create they're an entrepreneur and they're trying to create sales they're trying to be in prosperity talk about their environment and how to get themselves in the motivation excitement and energy in of closing so i think what i would ask them to do is really um i would ask them to first to look at like, what does that look like in five years? If all of this stuff that you're working on is really coming together for you, like, what does that vision look like in five years for you? Or maybe 10 years, like 10 years, like, you know. Uh -oh. there you go. There you go. So, so five years, 10 years, what's that vision? What do you look like? What does your environment look like in, in that time? And then begin to set up your environment so that you're living that now. And that, okay, I for, for instance, okay. So if I was to look at five, like, yeah, well, let's just say, can I just do a year? Let's do a year. Sure. Oh, I think <laughs> I'm a little bit, a little bit. Oh no. Am I echoing you guys on the, on the broadcast stream? I don't hear echo, but. Really? Maybe it's, maybe it's, yeah, it's echoing on my side, but you guys let me know if it's echoing, okay? Okay. Um, in the next year, uh, you know, we'll be living, in, so we'll be living in our new house. Yes. So how do I set up my environment now to represent Next year, Next year, 20 people working in our, in our coaching call center, the company completely self-managed. All I'm doing is more giving. giving and coaching. That's all I'm doing. We hear an echo. Hmm. I never turned on any of that. 
Okay, so you speak into that. Okay, I'll speak into that. So it's similar to actually you and I were having a discussion the other day um, about the fact that you're living in this, um, you know, transitional state, in a cute little bungalow, um, and but that you don't you know, you, you're not loving the environment because it feels a little bit, you know, like there's a lot of people and a little claustrophobic. And, and I, I explained that it's really important now, like, even though you don't feel like it and you might not even want to invest some of the money into it, it's really important to set your environment up now because you're going to be still living in it until December or January. Um, so it's really important to have that environment talk to you every day saying, you know what, you're worth it to have this environment now that's, that's beautiful and supportive and nurturing, even if it's just a temporary space, Hmm. like as opposed to walking in the door and thinking, ugh, like, I don't like this spot. This isn't great energy right now, but I'm just going to deal with it until December or January. Like, no, that's not what I want for you. What I want for you is you walk through that door and you say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm worth it. My family's worth it. Like we need to always be in a space that's awesome because we deserve it. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, I'm echoing. I'm going to get you. Can you see the uh, the thread at all below me? I can. No, okay. well, I did. No, it just went away. Oh, really? Oh, really? There must be something going on with the technology because we're echoing and not echoing. Okay, then here's what I'm going to do. If you can't see it, you can't see it at all? I don't see anything right now. Wow. Oh, that's all right, you guys. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do because I'm not echoing story, you guys. Doing that right doing now. That right now. Um, um, can we just share about room in a box, and then we'll actually end there, and how people could actually connect with you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, one of the new things that we've just uh, created, I'm really, really excited to roll out, is what we call room in the box, um, yeah. and that was thanks to Shanda's guidance. Oh, Such an amazing coach. Um, and what it is, is it's basically like we go in, I help, you know, you walk me through one spot in your environment, be it your, you know, if you're trying to gain prosperity and abundance in your life, let's walk through your office space and set that up so that you can be as creative and productive and just allowing the flow of abundance to come into your life. Um, you know, if you're looking for love, we can to, to have some fun in the, your bedroom and, and tweak that area. But basically, you walk me through your space. Um, you and I have a serious discussion so that I really understand like what your goals are, what your vision is, so I can best support you in really realizing that. And then I come up with a plan. And it's like super, super simple where I have a floor plan. This is how you should position your furniture. These are the colors that are best going to support you based on who you are, based on, you know, what profession you're actually in, based on what your associations are to colors. Um, and then I actually take it one step further just to make it super simple. And I pick out the furniture and the accessories and all of that. And and at different price points. So I'll suggest like, you know what? A chair in this corner would be really, really great. And here are three different choices of chairs at three different price points. So again, room in the box, super simple, super easy, designed to completely help and support you. And it is $3,000 for that. So, so exciting. So cool. And you've done that for a couple of our clients. Yes, yes. Talk about like one of them so that they understand. Literally, a room in a box. I did. Oh, it's so fun. Because so literally, that's the other part of it is you actually get a, a, a box in the mail and it's filled with all of these little fun things. Um, but I did. So I did it for, for one of our mastermind sisters. And when she, after we were done with just 
um, clearing her space and setting it up in like an optimal way and clearing out, you know, closets that were just, you know, brimming with stuff because she, what she did was she walked through, she gave me a tour, a video tour. And she sent me that, which was super easy. Um, I had her just measure out her space and then all of a sudden her business in the last, uh, four months, I think, right, has just completely, completely exploded. And and it was super simple. It wasn't anything. It was just easy. Yeah. And as a business coach, I hate to say that, but as a business coach, it's tough with someone, someone you know, opposing forces and preventing them from popping. Okay. So I'm going to end on that note. So how do they get a hold of you? Um, the best way, you know what, they can message me. Um, they can either just message me, private message message me, or if they want to send me an email, they can do that as well at Krista at homeinharmonydesigns.com. And I can post that in the thread as well. Perfect. 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 Can you also go on the thread after this and answer some questions? So I see some questions like, what's up with the Buddha? You know, stuff like that. Okay, absolutely. Would love to. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you guys, you guys, you guys, I'll see you Monday morning. 6 a.m. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.